Welcome back to Old War Stories with Uncle Jay. This is now continuing on to the next part of IBM and Sun. So let's cut back into that video right now. Big mainframe laser printers. You've seen big laser printers in banks. You know, the ones that stand like this fucking tall and they got six fucking paper drawers in them and shit like that. You've seen that. That's small potatoes small potatoes compared to these things i don't remember the model numbers of these machines i was just too damn young but there was a machine that was made in the 1970s that was still in operation in the 80s you see these mainframe ibm machines companies didn't buy these things they leased them they leased them because in a number of years, IBM would stop supporting that system. And while there would still be support and uh, replacement parts for it, you probably as a business, business would want to grow and go to a faster mainframe and bigger and better things to ultimately make more money and go on from there. Well, some companies did and some didn't. But a lot of these old printers were absolute war horses. These printers would boot up off of... Let me re repeat that. Yes, the printers would boot up. Thank you. They would boot up off of a floppy disk. That was all you needed. It wasn't no three and a half inch floppy that you might remember or even one of them five and a quarter inch jobbers. This was an eight inch floppy. Big motherfucker. And you can find videos on eight inch floppy disks. In fact, Adrian's Digital Basement recently released a video about using an eight inch floppy disk on a PC. That was fucking fascinating how he actually got that to work that was great but these printers would boot up off of eight inch floppy disks and i was fucking floored that you'd turn the printer on or in ibm speak uh ipl the machine ipl what the hell is ipl ipl was ibm speak for Initial program load. Nowadays, it's known as a reboot. <laughs> but in IBM speak, it was IPL. Booting the machine up by turning it on from, you know, cold, completely off. That was an IML, initial machine load. So there was a difference. But on our PC Junior, if we had to control all delete, my dad would say, IPL it. <laughs> And I did control alt delete and it would reboot. <laughs> In fact, I even remember as a kid, sometimes my dad would go like now it's backwards for you, so I'll try to do it the way you know it went. So the PC Junior keyboard was weird, so he'd go boop, boop, and I was sitting to the right of him. So on the left side, he hit control alt, and then I'd take the next step, you know, the next stand step, and go. Delete! And the machine would reboot. And uh, I'm going to have to make some mouth sounds here so you understand. But basically you'd have the old floppy drive seek followed by the beep. So on the PC Junior it went... Dun, dun, beep! And that was the stepper motor in the floppy running the heads all the way back and all the way back again for the... Dun, dun, and then the beep saying that post is completed and booting will now begin. And we IPL'd the printer. And you had to wait while it did its self-test or whatever it did. And the fucking printer went, dun, dun, beep. I said, holy shit, this is an IBM thing. It sounded just like the PC Junior. <laughs> Uh, it, it used the same seek in that. Now, different computers would seek the drive differently. Uh, Dano Oct 1, 
I think. He has viruses and shit like that. He just posted a video recently, as of the recording of this video, where he rebooted his Packard Bell, and that had two floppy disks, and that that is just a sound that fucking takes you back. Something you'll never hear again today, so you can watch that if you want and get the general gist, but these sounds that old computers would make. The printer, like I said, would boot off of an 8-inch floppy disk. Why so big? Well, that was what was around in the 70s. Obviously, IBM didn't make the drive. That was a Shugart drive made by Shugart Corporation, which I think later became Seagate. Anyways, this printer was not your bank thing, laser printer. This was the size of two beds, end to end. It was that long. Huge motherfucking machines. Huge. And the paper came on a roll. A six foot tall roll that you could not lift. And they had pallet jacks. And they'd load this paper. How in the fuck they did that, I don't know. They'd load this paper onto the roll. And then it had an, a big metal fucking arm that would go through this thing. And would lock into position. And the printer would pull the paper off this roll like a roll of toilet paper. And this 1970-something printer could print this was blazing fucking fast for these days something like 12 pages not per minute 12 pages a second oh yeah these printers had i think 18 inch fluorescent tubes because these would just print text Whatever the mainframe would send out in text, the printer would print. And that was it. It was a laser printer. So there were big, like, toner containers. Not a toner cartridge you put in a laser printer and you shake it. None of that shit. No, this was all separate. Big motherfucking container of toner. Big thing. And then it had the fuser roller and the imaging drum. The imaging drum was like this fucking big huge big drum three foot around four foot around big 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 thing and because the processing power was so limited in these days a lot of companies that would um have letters printed or whatever it was would want their company logo in the upper corner well that would be a graphic because they have their own font and their own thing and text isn't going to do that. So how did they do it? They would send a copy of their logo to IBM and have a film made. It was black and white only and the film was completely blacked out except for the logo which was white, or clear in this case, so light could pass through. And using this 18-inch fluorescent bulb, they had a special circuit that would flash the bulb, and that would send the light through onto the imaging drum to charge the drum. The toner then gets dropped on that, is then transferred to the paper, goes through the fuser, which pretty much melts or bakes it into the page and then it comes out and that's why pages out of a laser printer are warm because there is a fuser roller that involves heat now these big mainframe printers had big motherfucking fuser rolls these fuser rolls could take on the order of 15 minutes to heat up so they would keep them hot 24-7 and if you had to replace one, it was one of the few instances where you would actually throw the big red switch on the machine and power down this entire printer. 
most IBM work was done with the power on. There were enough safeties or IBM key lockouts or technician codes you'd punch in on the panel or what have you to disable the machine and sort of power down unnecessary circuitry. A lot of stuff was hot pluggable, so it was very rare you had to power it down. But the fuser, you had to power down and you had to wait for it to cool. And then you were faced with another 15 minutes to ensure that that fuser heated up and that the printer would print because you weren't leaving till that thing was shitting pages out again. Now, what did the printers do with paper coming in at such a high rate of speed and printing at such a high rate of speed? <clears throat> they had a platen that had holes in it and a vacuum was drawn on that to hold the paper to the platen with a vacuum. That's correct. So there was a vacuum cleaner motor type kind of deal sucking that page down and then to get the paper out of the printer it didn't just have that stupid thing on top of printers now where it comes out and you get more than 12 pages on there and they start falling off of it no 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 these had a stacker this was a platform and there was an incandescent light in there get that <laughs> that would see it and the stacker would allow this paper because it was fan fold with the holes on the side even though it didn't really i don't think it used the holes because of the high rate of speed it would just tear them but it came that way or some i'm not positive on all of that but anyway that would go in and the paper would fan fold onto the stacker and to prevent it from folding the wrong way and then folding up perfectly printed sheets of paper they would have the stacker at the top and as the printer would print a job and hundreds and hundreds of pages it would lower the stacker in steps until all the way down at the bottom when it finally tripped the switch and alerted the operator that the stacker was full and they'd have to bust the page there and pull out that huge stack of paper to then be processed further either for mailing or what have you some other companies had fancier stuff. Uh, they had uh, what was called, uh, a, as the way it was pronounced to me, a decalator. Not a decorator, a decalator. Or a decolator. Something that would decolate the pages. And with that, a lot of times in the server rooms, there was not the real estate to have this printer the size of two beds. And you had a bank of five of these fucking things churn, churning at the same time. So they had a 45 degree angle stainless steel paper angle changer. And the paper would go in underneath this 45 degree angle and come out at a 90 degree to go 90 degrees and often that would go into a decalator and the decalator would take this printed material in and would bust the page at the perforation and also bust out the sides and it even had different like cubby holes that it could put the pages in fascinating shit to see this stuff go so there were some mainframe printer calls and we did get one where I think there was some call to actually power the machine down. And I remember standing around for 15 minutes waiting for this thing to come back up. And there was even another time with a newer machine that made the most coolest sounds. Another big mainframe printer. My dad fixed the machine and said to the guy who worked there, okay, go and run your report or whatever you'd wanted to print again. <clears throat> and he did, but it said, uh, he shouted out, he said, the printer is offline. So I said, I got it. <laughs> and I reached up and I closed the lid and I hit the ready button on the printer, and this big motherfucking machine started whirring and churning pages out.
<laughs> that was fucking great. Oh, that was the joy of pressing a little fucking button and getting this huge machine to fucking do something was fascinating as a youngster like that. Okay, whoa, whoa, hold everything here. This video is getting way too long. So I'm going to break this up into multiple parts. So we're going to end it off right here. And next week on Sunday will be the next installment of this. I thank you very kindly for watching. Make sure you click like. Make sure you click subscribe. And stay tuned because next week will be the next part. Bye-bye.